Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and we're going to start part eight of Flex Press. And today we're going to do some cool stuff. We are going to extend the functionality of WordPress. Now, if you're not up to speed to where we're at now, you can go to our Google code, code.google.com forward slash p forward slash WordPress, and on our Google code, are all the videos from part one to part seven and several downloads to up to part seven so you can download those and the MXML is all there and we're gonna start right now with part eight what we're gonna do in this uh, session is create a new database element and access it using an item renderer which will enable us to extend the functionality of WordPress WordPress is gonna do something it doesn't normally do because we're in a very fluid environment now it is time for the big talk, okay? And the big talk comes from www.nkuartsandsciences.org forward slash go global. This is a talk that I gave when I went to Washington, D.C., and it's about the fluidity of computer architecture. Now, first, let me say that WordPress is a super piece of software. And one of the great functionalities of WordPress is that you can go right in it and edit PHP right inside of WordPress and then get it functioning just by a click of a button. So that's super. But there is a problem with software systems like WordPress, like Moodle, like Blackboard, like all these other systems that are based upon multitude of pages. So what you see is not what you get. So the interface that the user is interacting with basically sits on sometimes thousands of PHP, ASP, JSP pages that you have to interact with a server. So each time you click on a page, it has to refresh and establish your environment. So what we're actually using is an Ajax type system. Flex, Adobe Flash has a Flash player. And in that Flash player, everything's fairly fluid. You can change that interface very rapidly. So as opposed to having thousands of pages to, to support a complex system, you really only have a few. And we've done examples where we've taken blogs, like student blogs, which maybe had like, oh, 40 PHP pages to support it, and reduce it to maybe three or four pages by writing it in Adobe Flex. So I'm telling you, one of the reasons why we're taking this approach is because Adobe Flex allows us to take create a very fluid interface and to change that interface within a three month software cycle. So we're very excited about w this approach. We're going to talk about it more, but that's the big talk. Why present day learning management systems will fail and why we're taking the Adobe Flex approach. So enough said about that. Let's go on and create our database element. Let me quickly show you where we're headed. We're going to actually extend the functionality of WordPress by adding an image box next to the label elements. Now the image thumbnail does not exist in the database, so we're going to go and add that in the database so we can bring that in using the item renderer. Let's do that right now. So we're back in FlexPress and we're back in the old version where we had used the label function to create a title and date tag in a list box. Now we want to put an image in with that title and date tag. But that does not exist in our database. We need to go down our database and create an entry that will hold the address to the image thumbnail. So let's do that. Let's go down here to our system tray and we're going to click on our WAMP icon and go to the My or PHP My Admin. Now I'm in PHP My Admin. I want to go to the WordPress uh, database and I want to go to WP Post where I want to create a thumbnail image holder. So we have all our different data columns and we need to come down here and we need to add another column and we can do that by clicking on Structure. Go to the bottom and you can see at the bottom you have add one field at the end of the table hit go and now we're going to add a name for that field and we're going to call that field thumb underscore name and we'll give it 255 characters in length and the rest of the data will just leave blank and we'll go ahead and accept that. So hit save. 
And now if we look at our table, at the very end, we have a thumb on underscore name, and we're actually going to go into Flex, and we're going to fill out that data table. So let's try that right now. Let's go back to Flex. And we're going to go ahead and extend this and run the uh, XML and see if we actually see that table element. Now, if you'll recall, when we first started this whole FlexPress project, we created a WP underscore post MXML file, which showed us the data in our tables, in our SQL database. So let's go ahead and run that right now, and let's take a look at the post table. And what you're seeing right now is when we run this table, the last column here is comments. You don't see the thumb underscore name column. And the reason you don't see that is because this whole Flex project was not generated to read that table with that thumbnail in it. So it doesn't exist in the PHP. Let's take a look at the PHP right quick. Go up here, let's open up the bin debug, and let's open up the PHP and take a look at it. Right click, we're going to open this up with a text editor. And if we scroll down this text editor, you can start seeing get the SQL values right here. And you'll see all of those different columns. But when you get to the bottom, you don't see the thumb under underscore name. So it doesn't exist here. So we have some options here. I guess you could try to go to the WAMP server and rewrite the PHP. Boy, that's not going to work. What we're going to do is just regenerate this whole project and copy this code into the new project. And we're going to do all this in about two minutes. So it's much easier just to go ahead with this approach. So let's go for it. Right click on the screen and choose New Flex Project. OK, we're going to call this Flex My Thumbnail. And let's make sure we choose PHP. Get this uh, Flex Project PHP ready. And it's already keyed in on the WAMP server and the local host, so we're good there. We can validate the configuration. That's fine. Let's go next. Okay, this is typical Flex stuff, so let's go and accept this stuff. Let's hit Finish. And we've created our project. And now we need to go to Data and create an application from the database. Make sure our name is Flex My Thumbnail. That's correct. And let's create a new connection. And we'll give it a name. We'll just call it My Thumbnail. We'll skip description and auto connect and go next. And the database name is, well, WordPress. And if you're not sure of that, just go back to your PHP table in your WAMP server and check that out and let's test the connection and the connection was good so let's go next and finish uh, we want to choose from the different tables we want to choose the WP post as the table we've been working with cool and we can sort by ID or whatever it's not important for us right now we'll just we'll sort by post hit next and next and finish and now that new table is being generated, and at the end of it should be that thumbnail name. Okay, let's go down to the, now we're in our new project, Flex My Thumbnail. Let's click on the WP post and let's run that and see if that new name is at the end of that table. And indeed it is. You can see it there. We've got to open it up a little bit, kind of hard to get to. And so you can see there at the end of our table is the thumb underscore name. We're just going to type in here and type in a few. Uh, names and populate this database image one uh, jpeg and we'll put an image two jpeg and i'm going to pause and go ahead and put the rest of them in there we'll put about 10 in there that we can work with and see how the data works okay we're back and we've actually put in 10 uh pieces of data here, image 1 through image 10. We could put more in there but just to test the database to see if it's working. Let's actually go and look at the uh, XML and see if it's populated. So we can go PHP with our question mark and we'll declare our method. And if we recall that method was equal find 
all. And let's go and see if that does exist in our XML data. And here's our XML data. And let's go down here to the very end and see if we have a thumbnail. And, do we, and there we do. Thumb underscore name. And the data item there is image one. And then go further, image two and so on. So it's all working the way it should. And now we can use the item renderer to populate the list box with those images.